In this video, we'll review the NFL team win totals as set by the FanDuel Sportsbook for every AFC team. And we'll discuss whether they'll reach that number. And it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Eric, we're getting close to the regular season here. We're going to talk in just a minute about what we think is going to happen to these teams, and we got a lot of content coming up. Folks, don't forget to like the videos, share them with others, and become subscribers. We'd love for you to do that. Yeah, and if you've missed any of our content, check the description, and it has links to all our preseason content. Uh, we hope you'll you'll check them out. All right, I can't wait any longer. Let's get right into this discussion and let's welcome our guest. So we're bringing back a special guest to help us with these win-loss uh, over-under uh, totals. Uh, Mr. Vegas himself, Aaron Dean, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Welcome back. Hey, thanks guys. Pleasure to be back. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you the line of win totals for each team. And then we're gonna we're gonna vote all at the same time. I don't know how these guys are gonna vote. They don't know how I'm gonna vote. And then we'll have a quick discussion on each individual team. We'll start at the top of the most win totals in the AFC, and it's no surprise. It's the Kansas City Chiefs, eleven and a half. Remember, this is a seventeen game season. So will they reach eleven and a half wins? I'd like you guys to vote on that now. <laughs> look at this agreement right off the board um i'm not exactly sure uh why i say yes except that it's pat mahomes and andy Reid. um and yes they they miss some receivers but they seem to keep just plug and play um i just would say that even though the division i think will be a little better i think the chargers will be better i think the broncos will be better um I'm they were 14 and three last year. So I think they're going to get at least 12, 12 wins. Yeah. Just for me, I think that. that's the ceiling. Oh, go ahead, Michael. Just, uh, you know, the, the, usually you see the NFC, the NFL champion get draw the toughest schedule of the season. And these guys didn't this year. I mean, I think part of that's because the AFC West uh, gets the NFC North this year. Uh, NFC North is, is not that strong. Um, so that's part of this. And I mean, this team is just so good, but I, I agree I, with what Aaron just kind of said right there. I, I think their ceiling is, is a little bit lower, but 11 and a half wins, Andy Reed, come on, they're going to get it. Yeah. It's 12 points for me. So they just barely sneak over on the over. Also at 11 and a half win total is the Cincinnati Bengals. Will they reach it? Let's vote now. Oh, it's kumbaya. Everybody <laughs> agrees in here. Aaron, tell us why. If, if we would have done this two weeks ago, I think it would have been all green checks across the board. But really, uh, the big reason is uh, Joe Burrow. I mean, we don't know how long that calf string is really going to be. Uh, calf strings in general are very temperamental. And once you think you got it healed, you go out and you do something, just stretch, and all of a sudden you pull it again. So, um if they don't have Joe Burrow, Joe Cool, they go nowhere. Michael, absolutely right. I mean, I, the the uh, the these they have a a weaker schedule. Uh, they're playing against the the a, the AFC South, which we know is garbage, um, and they have the NFC West, which is um, you know got a couple of weak teams in there. But Joe Burrow not being a hundred percent makes me nervous. Eleven and a half is just too high. Eric. Yeah, and um, losing some RJP Ryan, I think, will hurt some. And I actually think this division is actually pretty darn tough. I think yeah, the yeah. Browns will be better. Don't sleep on Pittsburgh. They always are uh, competitive. Um, so, uh, I'll, and I'll say I, right now, Eric, I think it's the best division in football. Uh, um, I'm not going to disagree, but I don't think a lot of people will say, would immediately say that. All right. Uh, so let's see how long we can keep this streak going of agreement. Um, so the next is the Buffalo Bills. The Bills 10 and a half win total. Will they exceed it? Yes or no? Vote now. 
Okay, look at this. You guys are very smart today so far. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I mean, they were fourteen and three last year. They had a disappointing end in the in the playoffs, but uh, I don't think they're a significantly weaker team this year. So, um, I, I I feel comfortable with this, um, Aaron. I don't think the injury bug bites them twice, two years in a row on the defensive side of the ball. They lost a lot of big pieces last year that they had to fight through. Um, I think that changes this year. Also, too, um, I know tight end, rookie tight ends don't necessarily translate immediately in the NFL, but this guy's not going to be asked to do a lot of inline blocking. And I think Dalton Kincaid is going to be really, really nice weapon for them across the middle to open up Stephon Diggs. So I think that they will be a, maybe a smidge better, even offensively and defensively. I think they're going to greatly improve. Yeah. I'd like to see Sean McDermott make some changes uh, to how they approach the end of the season with those injuries, but I agree on the injuries. Odds makers got this one right with the 10 and a half is just low enough to make this a nice uh, 11. I think it's going to be 11, maybe 12. And the reason why it's not going to be much higher than that is because they have such a tough schedule. So AFC East plays against the AFC West and they get the NFC East, which are some tough divisions. 100%. Okay. The next team is also at 10 and a half. It is the Baltimore Ravens. Will the Baltimore Ravens exceed the 10 and a half win total? Let's go ahead and vote now. Oh, Aaron has broken our streak, Um, but I get it. This was not obvious to me. I was actually surprised that this line was so high. I'm high on the Ravens, but the fact that they have the same line as the Bills is a, a little surprising. But look at it this way. They were 10 and 7 last year. They almost reached this 10 and a half win total last year, and they had five games without Lamar Jackson. They only won one of those games. So presumably Jackson will be healthier this year. They've got an excellent defense. And I do think they've added some real weapons among the receivers with Odo Beckham Jr. and drafting uh, Flowers. Uh, so that's where I am. Uh, Michael? Yeah, I'm teetering on 10 to 11. I agree with the points that you made. They do have a, a an easier schedule for all the reasons that I mentioned when I was talking about the Bengals. To me, that's what gives them the 11 wins. Uh, but I, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit concerned uh, that that um, that Lamar Jackson's the answer to to winning this uh, division and winning playoff games. And so I, I think 11's the the, the ceiling for them. But I, I think they get 11. Aaron, uh, my ceiling's 10. I really feel like and and 10 they could go 11. Um, and a big part of that is I think is coaching. I think John Harbaugh is a fantastic coach. Um, let's remind everybody too, they were a one fumble away from beating the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs with, I don't even remember the backup quarter, backup, backup quarterback's name. So, uh, but I just feel like there, there's, there's definitely maybe potentially still some locker room linger with Lamar, not, you know, suiting up in the playoffs that he's going to have to win over. I mm -hmm. also feel too, with a lot of their additions, um, at wide receiver, they may ask Lamar to do a little bit more than he's possibly capable of doing. I'm not, I don't view him as a pass first guy. I view him as a run first guy that still doesn't know how to slide and is just one big hit away from being completely out for the entire season. To me, it's 10 wins. All right. Um, now we're moving to a whole slew of teams that are nine and a half win total. So we'll start with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Nine and a half wins. Will they exceed it? Go ahead and vote now. Well, let's just admit that Jacksonville should be very happy about the division that they play in. Um, so uh, they were ten and nine last year, and I, I don't, I, I don't think their division is any any tougher. Um, and I adding Cal Calvin Ridley to this team, I think, will be a nice push. They, look, let's face it. Not only do they have the AFC south to play against which could be six wins they play against the nfc south this year which could be another three wins puts them to nine just right there so uh you know i, I they'll probably lose one or more of those games but i i see these these uh, the, them easily getting the 10 wins uh, i think 11's even within reach but you know it's still there's still a couple years away from being an afc champion 
So I will shock the world on this one. This is a bet your house, bet your mom's house, bet your brother's house, bet your sister's house, bet your neighbor's house, any house you can get, bet this house on the over. And in fact, if you want to take half that money for them to actually be the number one seed in the AFC, I would do that as well. And I would even throw out a little flyer because it's got good money odds on winning the Super Bowl as well. So uh, I'm all in on this Jacksonville Jaguars team. And more importantly, I'm all in on Doug Peterson. I feel like him and Trevor Lawrence really, really, really clicked the last half of the season. They were very, very, very good. I'm not sure they're going to have enough defense to get them over the hump when it comes to winning the AFC and getting into the Super Bowl, but they will definitely have enough offense. And, uh, and I feel like Trevor Lawrence in another year in this system is going to be really, really, really good. Okay. For the record, don't bet my house. And now <laughs> I understand why we have such a homeless problem in this area. <laughs> um, so, uh, move, moving on uh, at nine and a half. Um, Let's talk about the New York Jets, nine and a half win total. It's really a commentary about Zach Wilson and how poorly I think he was. I don't need, I don't think Aaron Rodgers needs to be the MVP Aaron Rodgers. He just needs to be Aaron Rodgers from last year. And that's going to be such a huge upgrade in a healthy Brees Hall. I, I think they definitely get this over. Uh, Aaron? I, I almost was with Michael on this. I think this is their absolute ceiling to me. Um, I really feel like, uh, tr I mean, Aaron Rodgers is going to have a little bit of uh, ego issues, I think, this year. I think he's going to want to, like, show everybody that he's still the MVP candidate, and it might lead them into a little bit of too much off script and, uh, and not really stay on schedule and on time with the offense. The defense to me is still top three in the NFL um, and it's getting better. Uh, I, but I, I feel like Aaron Rodgers will be the limitation in this. And I don't, I don't even feel good about going the over. I really would have pushed if that was the push option. Yeah. You went right where I was going to go, Aaron. So I, I really like Robert Sala. I like this defense. I think, you know, slating in a good quarterback should make a huge uh, difference but not only am I concerned about Aaron Rodgers, but I understand that it could have been that he didn't know what he wanted to do last year. They have a tough schedule and you can't take that out of the, the picture. Not only do they draw the, you know, their own division, which is tough. They got the AFC West and then they got the NFC East. So, you know, nine and a half wins. I think that the Vegas pegged it right. That's going to be, it's going to be close. Moving on, also at nine and a half wins, one of those AFC West teams, uh, the LA Chargers. Yeah, I, I think this is also a year, um, a put up or shut up with Justin Herbert. He's uh, got a top notch offensive coordinator and uh, Kellen Moore coming over from the Dallas Cowboys who will actually let him eat and be able to throw the ball a lot because that's something that Justin Herbert does very, very well. I think this will probably be the last year they have uh, Austin Eckler as well. And I think he'll go out on a big year. Uh, whether or not their their head coach is going to get out of their way, uh, that's still yet to be determined. But I think of all the teams in the AFC West that are going to probably challenge the Kansas City Chiefs for the division this, or for their uh, division crown will be the LA Chargers. Michael? Yeah, I mean, the, to me, it's all about the schedule that these guys uh, got. They drew the hardest schedule for of the AFC West teams. They got in the, in the a NFC South, the one team they got was the Saints. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think they, they got a tough schedule, and that's going to be rough. I guess the Raiders are right there in terms of tough schedule as well uh, for NFC, AFC West, but obviously they're in a different category. So I think that, again, Vegas pegged this one right. Nine and a half, it's just right there on the cusp. But I would like to see um, – uh, I'd like to see Herbert have a good year uh, and, and that he he could very well push them over. I hear what you're saying about the schedule, Michael. They were 10-7 and seven last year, and their receiving course was constantly in the, the training room uh, and not on the field. At least they start the season healthy. I was really worried about Austin Eckler a couple of weeks ago, but he's now in training camp and seemed like he's going to be happy for an year. So the weapons they have on offense, along with Quentin Johnson, their number one draft pick wide receiver, um, I think they at least get 10 wins. 
All right. So um, let's move on to another nine and a half win total, the Miami Dolphins. Look at all these high win totals in the AFC. They can't all make it, can they? Let's see. Let's go ahead. Will they get nine and a half wins? Yes or no? Vote now. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be simple. If two is, is, doesn't stay healthy, I'm wrong. Okay. But um, so it comes really hard. He starts the season healthy, but all it takes is one really bad shot and still have some of those issues, not just to be out some games, but maybe ending his career. But they were eight and five with Tua and one and four without him. This team is really explosive. They're good on both sides of the ball. It's just if they can stay healthy. Aaron? Yeah, Aaron? I agree. Oh, uh, yeah, that was his biggest key component was that is um, lose. I mean, Tua, it, it's a massive question mark. One more hit and he's out for a minimum of half the year. Um, and if it's worse, it, it's a career ender. Yeah, that's right. And they have a tough schedule too, right? Like, mm -hmm. and don't forget, they started so strong. And even with Tua, they started to really putter out right there towards the end. Uh, I like Mike McDaniel, but I just think um, they got a tough schedule and Tua is just way too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Cleveland Browns, last team that's nine and a half win total. Will they exceed it? Let's vote now. Wow. Okay. Well, um, go ahead, Aaron. I know you like the Browns. Tell us why. <laughs> it's, that's mildly. No, I, I think this is also one of those, if you wanted to bet your mortgage, I think they go over. Um, I, man, I am a big proponent of offensive and defensive lines and they got a top three in both categories. So they just, nobody ever hears of Cleveland defense because well, it's Cleveland but they have the arguably the best pass rusher in the game in miles Garrett. Um, but I, I also feel like Deshaun Watson, um, he's had now an entire off season to prepare whether or not he gets back to his elite form that he showed with the Texans. I'm not sure, but of all the value in winning their division, this by far screams bet me at plus, I think it's plus 500 um, for them to win the division. Uh, if they start out, say, 2-0 because their first home opener is against the Cincinnati Bengals, they win that one because I think Joe Burrow will not be available for that game. But I, I think you're going to start seeing their odds tumble down pretty fast. Michael? Uh, Deshaun Watson's the, the, the part that I'm concerned about. So I agree with Aaron on offensive and defensive line. That could be huge. Uh, I, I would hope that the, you know, the – the ability the ability to, to play the whole time helps. Um, I can't remember if last year he was not able to practice with the team while he was out. I don't think that was the case. So it was kind of yeah. disappointing to see how poorly he performed towards the end of the season. Um, but, you know, if he is Deshaun Watson of old, it could be 11 or 12 wins. Um, but they do have a tough division. I, I agree. Getting the Bengals early is nice for them um, with uh, Burrow likely being out or being out. So, uh could be. I just I'm concerned about Watson. Um, so I'm writing down the different houses that uh, that Aaron has. <laughs> uh, so the the next team is in the same division. It is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Eight and a half win total. Go ahead and vote now. Whoa, boy, you love. That's why you said that this division's so good, right, Aaron? Um, so uh, when do the Steelers not reach? 500 and eight and a half wins and squeak into the playoffs. I just call this the Mike Tomlin factor. I'm going to steal uh, Michael Wiley's thunder because he always talks about coaches. I mean, uh, and the fact that I think that they, they, they got some much needed help on the offensive line uh, with Roderick Jones. That was a great first round pick um, leapfrogging the, the jets. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, over. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, going to the two back system is is really helpful for their running game. I mean, I know they haven't always done that. And I like how Tomlin's used the the cleverness of, of the one back system, but they got to go two backs for Najee to stay healthy. And I think that will help. Uh, and they got the easy schedule of all the team, the teams in their division. Um, and so I think that will be an impact. I see him winning at least nine this season. 
Aaron? Yeah, I think the biggest uh, play uh, would be week one and put all your money on Pittsburgh with the points against San Francisco 49ers. I feel like under under uh, Mike Tomlin, an underdog home opener, uh, to me is a easy win for the Pittsburgh Steelers I, as far as getting your money back. Um, on the line. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think we're going to see some improvement over Kenny Pickett, you know, being in his second mm -hmm. second year. All right. Um, also, eight and a half points is the Denver Broncos. So will they get eight and a half wins? Vote now. Whoa, across the board. No, this wasn't easy for me because I do think that they're going to be a significantly better team with Sean Payton. I think Russell Wilson played better down the stretch. But will they be five games better? Uh, four games better because they were five and 12 last year. I just couldn't pull the, the trigger on that. You're exactly where I'm at. I mean, they have a tough schedule, but I think Sean Payton will make them better. I think that they're going to win eight games, nine a chance. Um, it, it's a better team, but not a great team. Aaron? Ditto. All right, we'll just keep on moving. So the next uh, team is the Tennessee Titans. Seven and a half win total. Will they exceed it? Go ahead and vote now. Okay, I changed my vote with DeAndre Hopkins being signed um, because I was so critical of their wide receiver core, but I think he changes all of that. But not just that, it changes the mentality that they go in there. I thought they were going to be very quick to abandon the season and put Will Levis in for Ryan Tannehill, and I thought it would go way down there uh, immediately. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that they're going to be they're playing for this season. You don't sign Hopkins if you're not doing that. So uh, I'm going to go over. Uh, and, I agree with you. Um, I, I think they, you know, eight, nine wins is probably uh, the ceiling for them. Um, there's still some offensive weapons away from being a decent team. I think you're going to get the tail end of Henry, what he has to offer. But by all accounts, um, by reading a lot of the reports, DeAndre Hopkins has looked fantastic in camp um, and has really, really done well. So I, I think with that added, uh, you know, component of the passing game. Uh, and then I, I'm a big Vrabel fan. We know from last year, I think he's a top five coach in the NFL. Aaron, it guys, helps that they, they face the Colts and Texans. They do. Four times, yep. right? They do. Guys, they do. you've swayed me. I just changed my <laughs> vote. I looked at their schedule once again and said, gosh, they got, they got to be able to win eight of these games. Yep. But they're going to go eight and nine at best. So I think it's a barely win the division. So I, 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 like the, I like your arguments. I just don't see them winning more than eight games. First time in FFC – team total <laughs> show history that we've had a change vote very exciting all righty so let's uh let's keep it moving and with the new england patriots they also are seven and a half win total will they exceed it vote now but they have such a tough schedule and i actually think belichick says you know what let's use this as a uh get some better draft pick years Unless, of course, he's done, which I would have expected him to be by now. So I want to hear what Aaron has to say, but I'll give Eric a minute just in case he has something better to add to what I just said. No, I just it just seems like um, it's not just Michael and I that think the Patriots going to be good, not going to be good. Every free agent, every free agent goes to see the Patriots and every free agent says, nah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go elsewhere, uh, but. The division's tougher, and as Michael said, one of the hardest schedules in the NFL. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of big free agents say nah because they're not a big Bill Belichick fan. I mean, he's a really tough, demanding coach to play for as well. But I think the biggest thing that Bill Belichick did this uh, this offseason was two things. He got himself a shutdown corner. We all heard of Sauce Gardner last year with the Jets. The new one's going to be Christian Gonzalez, and I think uh, Bill Belichick will play to his strengths, and you'll see – you may have a, a rookie lead the NFL in interceptions. I think the defense will be on point. And then the biggest thing that I thought Bill Belichick did is he got an actual offensive coordinator and Bill O'Brien being there. So I really, really think that Mac Jones plays much, 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 much better. Okay, let's move on to the uh, Las, Las Vegas, Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders, six and a half win total. 
Will they exceed it? Let's vote now. That's such an easy thing to do. Let's just <laughs> move on to the next team. <laughs> no, no. This started Aaron, at seven Aaron and a half, and the books got squashed, and it's now down to six and a half, and it's about to move again. I mean, this thing could not be any lower. They are arguably the worst team in the NFL, and they do not have a great offensive line, a not very mobile quarterback that is very injury prone. That There's a study out or uh, an article out, I'm not sure which publication, I think maybe ESPN, uh, where it showed that if Jimmy G were to get hurt, the Raiders are actually the worst team in the NFL. Well, I won't, I won't spend a lot of time. You guys are the Ra- Raider <laughs> fans. But I'll just add, I'm not I'm not going to take shots at your Raiders. I will just say they play the second hardest schedule based on uh, projected win totals. So uh, I'm a no. Bet your mortgage. You want to talk about it. Let's go to the next. (laughs) (laughs) Moving moving, moving on. Uh, The Indianapolis Colts six and a half win total. Will they exceed it? Go ahead and vote now. Oh, look at this. Michael, you're in the minority, so I'll let you go first. This is all about schedule. Uh, you know, it's funny. I ranked them very low, as you know, Eric, on the the, the power rankings. But uh, I think they draw an easy schedule, not only uh, their own division, but also the NFC South. So, you know, hey, let's that's maybe three or four wins just right there without too much struggle after I think that they're not that great of a team. But I think that the six and a half is low for this easy of a schedule. That's the understatement of the year that this is not that great of a team. This team is a disaster. Absolute disaster. Jonathan Taylor is already, he says, the team says he's hurt. He says he's not hurt. What's definitely hurt about Taylor is his feelings. He doesn't want to play there. If they do not have Jonathan Taylor, that is huge. And it will not take long, folks. For them to say, Anthony Richardson, this is your team. Go for it. He is so raw. I don't expect him to do well at all this year. Um, so I, I feel pretty good about under here. Aaron? Agree. I think defense, opposing defenses are going to make him pass the ball, and that is not going to be a good thing. Last team is the Texans, and they are also six and a half. Will they exceed it? Go ahead and vote now. Well, I I, I kind of think that uh, D'Amico Ryans is a home run hire. I think that their defense is actually going to be a top 15 defense with him being now the head coach. Um, they were they were headed that way last year, um, and I think that they've gotten remarkably better there. But uh, at quarterback, they're obviously going to be very, very raw, not a lot of offensive weapons to go with it. Um, I would love to say the over just because I'm a big D'Amico Ryans fan but they are definitely going under and it's just for the lack of offensive production. Yeah, This team got three wins last year and they lost their best offensive weapon in Brandon cooks. Mm -hmm. As usual, this was awesome. If you missed it, be sure to check out. We did the same video on the NFC projecting win totals. And yes, there was plenty of arguments and disagreements. So you got to check out that video. It's on the screen now, as well as another video we think you enjoy. Until next time, take care, everybody.